Hello and welcome back to another Rome Remastered video. And in today's video we are starting the Alexander Campaign. So, let's begin. Following the death of Philip II of Macedon, his 20-year-old son, Alexander, has taken the throne. A victory at Chironia had united Greece under Philip's banner, but in the confusion following his death, unrest is rife. Alexander must crush this dissent quickly. Only once this is achieved can he look to carry through his father's plan to strike at the mighty Persian Empire. With the all-powerful Persian fleet patrolling the waters to the south, Alexander will need to pick his moment carefully. Securing coastal settlements will deny the Persian ships the ability to refit, eventually lessening their effectiveness. But Alexander cannot spare the men to garrison such settlements too heavily, and it may be necessary to slaughter those who might otherwise rise up against him. To achieve his objective within his lifetime, Alexander will need to maintain his momentum as he drives into the heart of Persia. Reinforcements will take months to arrive, so he must recruit local mercenaries to bolster his ranks. In order to proclaim himself the rightful king of Asia, Alexander must control ten key cities within the given turns. Alright, so let's look at what we have here. As you can see, we have 100 turns to complete all of the objectives, and we start by losing money. Uh, we start with two settlements, three armies, one navy, and uh, Sparta is very unhappy with us, so we're going to have to start off by lowering the tax rate so they are happier with us. Uh, Pella is alright, so we can uh, increase the tax rate. Uh, and then we can go into construction. Uh, so since we need improvement on public order, I'm going to build the Temple of Zeus to increase public order. And in Pella, public order is okay. So I'm just going to focus on military objectives, which is building cavalry. Since both of these settlements do not have the ability to produce cavalry at the start. Um, yeah, uh, then we're going to look at our armies. We see that Alexander could have a bit more troops, so we're going to move uh, some of those troops from the nearby army. And then the other two slots will be filled with mercenary troops. Uh, then this army will go into Pella to just fix up public order, allowing us to increase the tax rate once more. And then I'll actually build a peasants unit so that we can send this army out to go and attack while there's still a garrison to uphold public order. Or at least some of it. Um, I'm going to move this ship here so that Alexander, once he's conquered this settlement, he can quickly just sail down and assist conquering the Persians. Uh, yeah. So let's go attack, and there's actually a second army here, but that's fine. We'll deal with them in a second. Uh, we'll just continue the siege normally, and we'll fight them when the battle arrives. Uh, this army, I'll move them over here to the river, so that we're not out on an open field, and if this army at uh, decides to attack us, we'll have the terrain to our advantage. And yeah, that's pretty much all we can do in this first turn, so let's move on to the second one. Uh, we got a new general, that's good. Uh, we're still losing money, but that's alright. Uh, and as you can see, this army belongs to this settlement. Which means that if we take them out, uh, this will turn into a rebel army, which will hopefully be also a weaker army. So let's go and attack. Uh, 
Now, I'm going to auto-resolve this battle because, as you can see, the favor is clearly in our side. You know what? No, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to fight the battle manually because, although this is a very easy battle, we're going to need as many troops as we can have. So I'm not going to just let the AI make a few mistakes and cost a few more lives when I could instead play the battle myself, spend a few extra minutes, uh, but still achieve victory, gain extra income, while not sacrificing as many lives in the process. So although I want to auto-resolve it, because I know how simple this battle is, and we should have no trouble with it, I have auto-resolved many battles before, and I do not want to repeat doing that unless it's really pointless to fight it myself. Uh, and the purpose of building two battering rams is just a personal preference, really. Uh, I build two most of the time, Whoops. Uh, because it allows me to take up the main gate but then also allows me to uh, send in troops from another side or angle, allowing me to flank the enemy, which makes them route faster and thus saves more lives and time. Um, since they're not getting any reinforcements, I'm not worried about being flanked or anything like that. So I'm just going to uh, break open the walls and gates, charge in with my infantry forces, secure a, sol a sort of foothold, and then allow my other troops to get inside as well. And I'm putting them out of phalanx formation so that they can get there faster, really. That's the only point for doing that. I think the enemy can go that way, that's why I'm also blocking it up. I'm not sending in these guys yet because I want the enemy to charge in and attack us there. But they seem reluctant to do so. And since this battle isn't or they're just gonna run away. Uh, since I don't know what the enemy is planning at this point, I'm going to advance cautiously. Uh, what's great about having so much cavalry is that you can also travel across the entire entire settlement and easily uh, flank the enemy. For example, I could have my infantry moving up this way from the south, and then have my cavalry, uh, once they're engaging combat, I could have my cavalry uh, attack from the north. I'm waiting for the enemy to react to my movement. They don't seem to want to. And I'm going to turn off skirmishing mode so they don't run away, really. Uh, but we do want them to just fire at will. So that we can get this over with a bit faster. That's the enemy king dead. And although I'd like to reform and get into a nice formation, uh, they're going to interrupt us. So I'm just going to fight them head-on, normally, without any formation other than standing and fighting. Don't want these guys getting too close. Uh, I'm just trying to box in the enemy at this time, to have to strike them here and there at the same time. I'm not even going to engage him because just like that he's going to die very easily. 
And they're still going to engage me once more, preventing me from getting into a nice formation. But as you can see, just the sheer number of missiles being thrown at them can be a brutal tactic at weakening them. And then having our spears, or pikes, that quickly take care of them at a sort of distance. I want to be careful of friendly fire. That's really the biggest threat here. So I'm going to turn off fire at will. Uh, I'm going to start moving closer to help out and then have our cavalry just give the final push and helping hand. As you can see, as soon as we stopped firing at the enemy, uh, the casualties have stopped, so I'm guessing those two died from friendly fire. Yeah, we don't need the cavalry there. These guys can do it themselves. There we go. And only 13 casualties. The first time I did this battle and let the AI auto-resolve it, I took 120 casualties. So I'm so glad I did this battle manually to save a few lives in just a few minutes of gameplay. Uh, I'm going to occupy since the public order is pretty high. I'm going to build... Trying to Zeus so that we can have better public order. What does this settlement have? I know we have to sort of blitzkrieg through this because we only have 99 turns left and the Persians control a lot of land, meaning they'll have a lot of money and armies to go and fight us. So I want to... Only three there, that's good. That means we should take that out with ease. Uh, I'm fine with lowering the tax rate for a short time just to uh, take some more settlements, which in the end will be a lot more beneficial than a higher tax for a turn or two. And... We can move this turn... So we will move this turn. Uh, because we took so few casualties, uh, we don't need to retrain anyone, so I'm just going to leave that alone. And... Um, Parmenian and Alexander are going to start fighting the Persians together, but I'm trying to decide upon where... Alexander should land. If Parmenian should take out these two forces, because it's very few soldiers and they'll easily handle that. And if Alexander should go for Halicarnassus or something else. Yeah, I think I'll have Parmenian. Yeah, we have too little infantry to attack walls and stuff in Parmenian's army, so I'll just use Parmenian to take out these two armies, and then Alexander will land on that beach and head for Halicarnassus, which by next turn, or next two turns, will be secured, and we can continue our advance. Uh, what I'm going to try and focus on is getting Parmenian's army to have more infantry troops so they can start doing more damage uh, to the enemy. Uh, so for this battle, as you can see, the enemy is very weak, so I'm just going to use our cavalry 
to take out their missile units and then have our infantry finish them off at the very end. Now I need to play aggressively here to stop the enemy from uh, shooting at us so that they end up just running away or getting stuck in combat. And these are immortals which means they can also shoot at us so I'm going to have to be careful of that as well. Alright, with that unit routing we'll be better off now. And the second army is still a bit off, so we have time. I want to stay out of the range of the Immortals. Because they are a unit that can transition between spears and missiles, or are being archers. Which is not a fun experience for us at the receiving end of that. Yeah. So what we're going to do is just move our pikes up, get ready to engage them, and then turn around to face the second army. Which I'm actually going to send our cavalry to take out their missile units before we arrive with our infantry. And the second army does not have any immortals, so we'll be fine about that. Oh, they're shooting at us. Uh, that's good, we're weakening down the immortals. Uh, now they're running. So now we're just going to finish off the second army, which will mainly be uh, moving up our uh, pikemen to engage their infantry and once again using our cavalry to take out their missile units which are nicely hanging back from the rest of the force. Run into formation. Actually if we could hit them that'd be nice. Flanking. They are still fighting the immortals. I don't want to get stuck fighting spear infantry with cavalry. It's not going to be a pleasant experience. As I seem to be repeating with any enemy units I encounter. Alright, those immortals got away, but that's... That's okay. We can still finish off their other units. Uh, so now I'm just going to have our pikemen engage whatever infantry unit we encounter first. And then take out that second enemy general using our cavalry, right on cue. And they have no more missile units left in this battle, which is nice. So I'm going to send back the rest of our cavalry so that they can easily chase these guys down when the time comes. Uh, so, as always, at the end of the battle, we're just going to chase them down so they're not left around for us to fight again. And nine casual... no, eleven casualties. That's still pretty good. Seeing how we killed nearly 600. Ooh, there's actually a settlement here. So what I'm going to do is move Parmenian to try and take that settlement next turn. 
and then have Alexander ready to take Halicarnassus very soon. Hmm, there's an army here. Well, I think we should fight it. Let's see, what do we have? So they have four archer units, five archer units, two immortals. Uh, are these chin? Uh, are these chariots? Hmm. Well, chariots will be annoying to deal with, but yeah, I think we can take them. All right, so let's fight Memnon of Rhodes. Yeah, this shouldn't be too difficult. We'll just use our cavalry to take out their archers and their cavalry, since it's just light cavalry, while we have mostly heavy cavalry. And then our infantry should have a very easy time taking out their spearmen. Okay, so we don't have to worry about any second army this time. I'm going to turn off skirmishing mode. What I'm going to do is actually have high pass pists on the left and right side. So that in case we do get flanked, they can put up an okay fight, while our javelin men, right? Yeah, javelin men, which are not really meant for uh, fighting infantry or any other units in hand to hand combat, just stay away. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll move. Two more of them to that side. And now Alexander has to stay alive. If Alexander dies, I believe the campaign has to end, end immediately. Which makes sense, because, I mean, it's all based about him conquering all this land within his lifetime. Which can't happen if he's dead. Um, I'd like to have the enemy cavalry and possibly missile units distance themselves from the main force. All right, I'm going to have to pay attention here. There's going to be a lot happening in very little time. All right, let's try and start a mass route. Oh, they're firing at us. That's good, good, good. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, that's infantry. All right, let's try and back away so that we have them chase us. Oh, let's actually kill their general while we're at it. And that's a nice amount of the enemy force split up. If we could kill Memnon, that'd be very beneficial. But only if we could do it before spearmen arrive to interrupt us. or heavy infantry. Perfect. Nice. Very nice so far. We have... Oh, that's not nice. They're hitting us really hard with their missile units.
Mm, I don't want to get stuck here. This could not be a very nice experience. Especially with those guys around. Oh, we didn't even have to fight them. That's nice. Now we're just going to continue distancing our ourselves from their infantry by using our cavalry and then just hitting whatever we see being open. Oh, okay. They're leaving their archers out in the open. I have to be careful about Alexander here. So actually I'm going to have to take out that much further away target. And now we have all our cavalry reunited. Um, so I'm just chasing everyone down so that we don't have to deal with them later on. Yeah, those are archers. I think we can leave chasing them alone for a second. So that we can destroy the remaining archers. Uh, what I should be doing is also constantly moving my infantry up so they can actually play a role in this battle. So, at this time I'm just maneuvering my troops to find a weak point in the enemy lines. Hmm. Their weakness seems to be making bad decisions about attacking me. That's good for me. But, that doesn't mean I shouldn't be paying attention to where their troops are. So pretty much the rest of this battle is just going to consist of mm, uh, guerrilla kind of tactics of charging in, doing some damage, charging out once we see the results, and then repeating that process. Oh, those are not archers. You know what, we just have so many cavalry units at our disposal, we can just charge in and it will cause a mass rout. Yeah, just like that. There we go. That's exactly what I wanted to happen. And there we go. Alright, so I'm just going to speed up the time as we watch our men chasing them all away.
Unfortunately, it seems that quite a few managed to escape, which is only 104 compared to our 1591. So I think that was another successful battle, and especially since it was a full flag facing another full flag. Alright. Yep. Just checking the notifications. Uh, we're going to besiege Halicarnassus. Uh, also besiege the second place. Only to find another two armies nearby. Um, and then we're going to have to uh, immediately attack this, so this army doesn't get a chance to attack Pella, because I believe that's their only settlement, and if it is, then the faction will be destroyed, destroying that army. Once again, another very easy battle that I'm just going to play, because I don't trust the auto-resolve. So I'm going to split up my infantry into half and half, uh, so that in case we encounter any trouble, we can easily uh, flank the enemy. Now what might be a better idea, and better use of units, would be actually having our pikemen and hoplites uh, carry the bat battering rams, so that our missile units can attack the light infantry standing right here. And in case they would decide to charge out just as the gate were broken open, uh, we could have a very easy time responding to it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to let them skirmish so that they back away, not forcing our enemy to fight our troops to fight in an uncomfortable spot or position. Uh, and shortly after that I'll start moving my troops in. There we go. They seem to have listened to that. So I'm going to charge in with the rest of my men. Uh, and I would try to get them in there as well, but seeing as the enemy is charging towards us, uh, I think we can wait with that. They're not charging towards us, so we're not going to wait with that. Yeah, see, they just hid there right now. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. So what I'm going to do is, as soon as you get really close, the cavalry always engages you. I don't know why they do that. They do that in every single battle, that the cavalry will sort of ride out to engage you. Uh, that's why I'm keeping my skirmish units farther away. If it was just infantry, they might also charge out, but it's less likely. Plus, they'd be slower, so we'd have more time to properly react. Yep, there they are. Uh, now, I don't want... I, you always want to avoid casualties, but in this campaign particularly, because of how few troops you really have, 
and how you start off really low with money. And there's no real time to recruit troops and wait for recruitment. I personally am a slower campaign player. I t take things very slowly, recruit troops, wait for everything to be uh, big and powerful instead of blitzkrieging like this. So I'm still getting used to just charging in, sort of, and not thinking about, oh, what will happen next turn, but just dealing with the closest army and moving on. Luckily our pikemen are very, very strong. So we don't have to worry about anything from these enemies. Although it would be better to spread out like this. I'm just sending in the cavalry to sort of hit the enemy in the back uh, and weaken them faster. And I'm just sending them out really quickly so they don't take casualties. Alright, and that army should be very soon gone, and there it is. Uh, exterminate, because it's only 35% public order. Which will allow us to now have the tax rate at normal instead of low. Uh, once again, building the Shrine of Zeus, or to Zeus, so that we have improved public order very quickly. Uh, and in the next turn, which will be just turn 3, we will try to secure both of these settlements and prepare to move on further. Uh, money is slowly improving. We're still not gaining money, but uh, we're losing it at a slower rate, which is better. I'm going to move the fleet away because you can see the Persian fleet moving towards us and I know our fleet will not be able to hold them off, so I'm just going to try and save them if possible. And the reason I'm adopting all of these generals and sons is to have uh, more generals for the armies, plus improved public order, because they're governing over it. So actually, since we didn't take too many casualties here, but since only one unit took 12 casualties, which isn't even that much, we're just going to leave that one there instead of recruiting more. Yeah, I think that's what I'll do. I'll give a... I'll think about it. But first, I'm going to take these two settlements and continue from there. This is an extremely easy battle. We should have next to no casualties, probably closer to two to five. But I don't trust the AI, and since this is a cavalry unit, which we will be fighting, I might as well spend a minute or two dealing with this as well. I don't... yeah, I said I should switch out to have the pikemen and hoplites take their spot, but the generals and cavalry units very rarely stay close to uh, the gate, so it'd probably be useless. Either way, we should have a very easy time dealing with them. And in this scenario we don't need two gates because, or two entrances, because as you can see, the enemy is distancing themselves. Now 
gates are breached, and the way into the city is open for our soldiers. Order the attack. Alright. Um. Good. Um. We have an okay bit of ca amount of cavalry. We should be able to do something to these guys. Will they engage us? Will they not engage us? They will. Nice. Oh. Yeah, I'm not going to take fire from them like that. I'm just going to go in and have my pikemen deal with it. Very easily. No casualties. One casualty. I don't know if I mentioned this, but I'm going to repeat it. Uh, the reason I immediately end the battles, or most of the time end the battles, uh, when attacking a settlement, once the victory shows up, is because uh, they have nowhere to run. So if we end the battle now, or kill them all, it won't make a difference. We just might end up taking more casualties. The only real benefit to doing so would be... building up experience, which will make your soldiers a little bit better at fighting the enemy. But that's not really necessary. And I think seeing how the enemy has plenty of armies to attack us with, they'll get the experience they need. I'm not worried about it. As you can see, we're now only down to losing 61 denarii every turn. Yeah. That's better. Alright, uh, now what we can do is we can start moving. Yeah. I'm still deciding how many, if I should send all of those troops or not. To come on down here. And assist. Of course this just might kill our navy before we do that. So I'm being a bit cautious, but you know what? I'm going to build that cavalry. It may be light cavalry, but it's a start. Just to assist in any fighting that we need to do. Uh, time to take Halicarnassus. I'm going to auto-resolve because siege battles can be a very big pain, especially when you have pikemen and hoplite units instead of uh, sword-bearing units. Mm, 80, that's... I'll... I'll... no. I could have lived with that, but... No chances. I'm leaving no... Nothing up to chance. Now what, what I want to do is not only to boost our income, which is already a nice boost, as we took Halicarnassus. Uh, but as you can see, all these red triangles, or upside down triangles, will indicate is that they are from a different culture, which means that they lower our public order. That's why... Not everything I'm building is necessarily for income, but just to replace the other culture's buildings so that public order is improved. Uh, I'm going to retrain all of the weakest units we have. Even though they're all really good, in good shape. Um, I'm going to recruit... Actually, I'm going to recruit a spy, so we can see what's going on. And then two hoplite units, because we have the income to handle it. 
Plus we're going to need someone to garrison the area. Which actually could come from this place. Yeah, why not? Yeah, why not? That is what I will do. I will... Deal with the public order penalty. That has to thus lower the taxes. But we'll start moving so that we can safely hold Halicarnassus. Um, yeah, so I think I'm about to end it here. We have uh, secured a profitable economy and strong economy. We have a foothold in the Persian land, and we have troops ready to march out. So I hope you enjoyed, and I hope this was a helpful beginning to the Alexander campaign.